give up. Come on, Sora. Together we can do it. Okay. Now, Zora, let's close this door for good. Wow, slap, crack. But don't worry. There will always be a door to the light. Whoa, you can trust King Mickey. Now, they're coming. Donald, Goofy, thank you. Where am I? Stay asleep. Huh? Who's there? You should remain asleep. Here, between light and dark. Between what? Oh. Huh? The king! Where's the king? Together we close the door to darkness. After that? You came drifting here by yourself. You did not have the strength to overcome the darkness. Or maybe you were close to it. <laughs> As if I'm some kind of demon. <laughs> Turn from the light. Shut your eyes. Here, blanketed by the darkness, sleep is safety. Sleep is eternal. But... Oh, what's this? It is a door to the truth. Take it and your sleep ends as you take the first step toward the truth. But know this. The truth will bring you pain. Will you still go? There is no return to the security of sleep. This seemed like a boring place to take a nap anyway. That was very well said, Riku. door to the truth, huh? Hello everyone and welcome back to Mistledyne Online. We are going to begin Kingdom Hearts Re-Chain of Memories Reverse Rebirth Mode, or let's just refer to it as what it is. Riku's Story. That's right, after a long series where we focused on Sora, now we get to see what Riku, the real Riku, was doing the whole time. So we're gonna play as Riku, set it to proud mode, and I feel like having some good vibrations, so let's keep those on as well, and let's see what Riku did while Sora went to sleep. Riku is in Castle Oblivion, the same place where Sora is, however, the big difference here is look where we are. Look at the floor. Basement 12. 
We are on the 12th floor of the basement, the deepest area that we got to. Huh. So it looks like Riku is starting out opposite of Sora. Very interesting. Now, a little bit about Riku. Let's uh, look at some things that he can do that Sora can't. One, jump super high. He can jump so much higher than Sora. Uh, than Sora. Also, he has the Soul Eater and not a Keyblade. The Soul Eater is the sword that we saw him with throughout one. Also, he has Dodge Roll and a Leap, uh, which is actually super useful, to be honest, and really, really, really great. Worth mentioning, let's go ahead, look at the pause menu, and let's look at our deck. Riku cannot customize his card deck, he must fight with the provided deck. The cards in this deck will change as Riku advances through the game. Alright, so we can view it, nothing important whatsoever. You, you'll you see that all we have is Soul Eater. That is all we have. That is all you need to rely on. We start at level 1, 80 health. Worth mentioning, we do not have Gemini's Journal, we have D Report. All right, other than that, let's go ahead and continue. Now, there are some minor differences, <laughs> minor, uh, if you could say that, between Sora and Riku that we will get into as the LP uh, walkthrough continues. Here we will use Hollow Bastion, one of the last worlds for Sora. It just so happens to be the first world for Riku. Interesting. This is Hollow Bastion. What you see is not real. It is the world of your memory. My memory? The things you remember from your time at Maleficent's castle became a card, and that card made this world. You've seen everything here before, haven't you? Yeah. So what now? Am I gonna learn something? Maybe meet someone? you would meet the people in your memories. Ordinarily. What does that mean? Hey, I'm asking you a question. Fine. But it had better be you I run across next, voice. <laughs> Who would have thought that Riku would refer to voice as voice? I guess that makes sense though. It's literally just a voice speaking from the heavens. And we get the key of beginnings, just like Sora. Wow. It's like we've played this game before. Welcome to Hollow Bastion, everyone. This is pretty exciting stuff. Uh, the last that we saw Riku, really saw Riku, was in Kingdom Hearts 1, when him and King Mickey sealed the door of darkness. Well, now, Let's go ahead and battle the Heartless and see what Riku can actually do in combat. So you will notice right off the bat that we are doing a tremendous amount of damage and we are pretty much able to kill these wizard enemies pretty damn quick. Now in this one battle, odds are that we will hit the next level that we are supposed to hit. That card break that we just got is very good. Uh, card breaks are super useful on Riku, although not quite yet. All right, so that was another important thing that I need to show you as fast as I can, and I'll probably show that to you in the next battle. There we go, we hit a level up and we get a zero card, which kind of sucks, of lasting days. Now, when Riku levels up, different from Sora's, we don't have CP to worry about because obviously we can't change our deck. We don't have slates to worry about. Uh, so the only thing we have is HP, attack boost, and darkness boost, which we'll get into later. We are going to go for attack boost. You don't get attack boost often. I believe it's every three to five levels. Um, I will find out. Uh, it, it, different sources say different things, oddly enough. I think the original game on GBA is five, and in this game, I believe it is three. Although, there's something important here. If you want to level up your DP, which you probably should, your darkness points, you don't want to level too much here, because obviously you don't even have access to it yet. But I want to show you guys something really, really cool about Riku and the way he fights that is different from Sora. So first of all, you're going to focus just on your three hit combo. That's pretty much it. All right. I wasn't able to show it in that fight, but that's okay. We've got a, an, oh, another lasting days. We need a red card, uh, by the way, to continue on. We need to watch out for that. All right, so. Unlike Sora, if you look at our reload gauge, we can't actually uh, reload. Or can we? 
Just hit it once and you will instantly reload everything. Now, it is worth mentioning that Riku cannot heal in battle. He does not have cure, obviously, or anything like that. So the damage he sustains is damage that is going to stick. And that's a problem for Riku. Uh, although, we are so damn aggressive and we can recharge things so fast that honestly card breaking is going to be so easy for us. And we got a red card, which is exactly what we needed, a level one red card. Now, we can't increase our attack boost, so we are going to increase our HP. I highly, highly, highly recommend increasing your, uh, your attack every single time that you can. All right, and in that last battle, we hit level four. Again, though, we can't increase our attack boost, so we are just going to increase our health. It is worth me worth mentioning that in one more level, we will increase to the point where we can increase our attack boost yet again, which I highly recommend doing. All right, so let's continue on to the world that we can go and not get hit by that, because that is just the most annoying thing that can happen. Okay, now that we have actual control over Riku, we can continue on. Uh, that was a pretty sloppy moment there on my part, but that's okay. We'll continue. Use this door because it's the only door we can use. Now, I'm not going to explain the map process uh, because I do believe that we've kind of already shown that pretty well in the original Chain of Memories that we showed with Sora. We explained it pretty well. Basically, every map card that you use, the next door to open is going to cost one more. So it's pretty important to have a wide variety of different map cards. That's actually one of the only reasons why we will fight as Riku. So I'm going to try to skip a lot. The reason for that, and something that I didn't do as Sora, I, uh, and we can also look at our map if we so choose, uh, and see that obviously this is the door that we should go through. There is no reason to explore heavily with... Uh, oh, we need a we need a two card. Oh my! Let's go ahead and use the lasting days level six here. Um, it's worth mentioning that you don't need to explore with Riku because you don't have access to a deck. And with no deck, well, there's no real reason to worry about collecting anything. The only thing you can get from hitting things now in levels is HP balls, which we don't really need. All right. Let's go ahead and use our first story door that we can do here. Now, we need a red card. I'm going to go ahead and use a level 7 Looming Darkness, just because that's so high that we don't really need that. And there we go, our first story door. Huh. Everything is just how I remember it, even this room. It must be nice being back in your old bedroom. Think of all the memories. You again. Sorry, but these memories I could do without. Maleficent gave me this room. So she did, and you lived here, tempted by the darkness she offered. You cast away your home, your friends, everything. But at least they gave you a nice room. Stop talking. Huh. That is the first that we got to see of any of Riku's backstory about what happened after he left Destiny Islands in the first game. Apparently, Maleficent gave him a room. She can't be all that bad, can she? See how far we can jump now as the one and only Riku. So right here, we are going to need a seven or higher? I don't think so. We're going to go ahead and reset that counter with a zero card, which is exactly what you will do. And finding ourselves on the next side here, we will go ahead and get as high as we can. Woo! Gotta love being able to jump that high. Oh. Uh-oh. 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 That will bring the uh, lift down for us. There we go. Oh, God. Okay. Well, then. Well, then, Corey, if you don't want to do this like I want you to. We'll wait for the lift. Thank you, lift. Now, it is worth mentioning. I guess I can talk a little bit about what this LP is, or walkthrough is going to entail. It's going to be... For the most part, didn't mean to do that. So it's going to entail, for the most part, focusing on... We're going to use Sleeping Darkness here. On Riku's actual story and bosses and stuff like that. Obviously, the random fights that we can get into, I'm going to cut out. And I'm going to cut out, like, exploring rooms because there is nothing to explore. So we can just go through this and go right to our second 
door. Our second story door, the key of guidance. We need a green card here. Luckily, we have one. <laughs> we have a green card. That's funny. Because of immigration. And we find ourselves right here in the foyer. Follow Bastion. No one here either. There's nothing but Heartless in this castle. Voice! I know you're watching, so explain this. Where are the people from my memories? Do you want to see them? Of course I do. But you cast them aside. What? You dreamt of the outside world, and you passed through the door to darkness. Behind you, you left family, friends, home, everything, all in pursuit of darkness. But I cast that aside, aside too. And what do you have to show for it? First your home, then the dark. Your heart only knows how to cast away, like the movie. It's empty, like the movie. Like your memories. That's why you don't meet anyone. Your heart is hollow, except for the residual darkness. You're wrong. I rejected the darkness. <laughs> Did you really now? Key to truth. So before you guys watching this little video here, get to see the whole thing. Who do you think... Who do you think is chatting up Riku right now? If you had to guess, who would you say it is? Make sure you leave a comment letting me know right now. Instead of at the end when we see who it is. So we'll just continue on to our final door here. Uh, unfortunately, it looks like we're going to have to use a moment's reprieve here. Oh no, we need a five or higher. So let's go ahead and fight some enemies and hopefully get some map cards. Alright, so in that last battle to get some more map cards, we ended up hitting level 5, which is exactly what I wanted to do. At level 5, we will have our second attack boost, which we absolutely want to grab before we use this next room, actually. Finally, we got a level 6, uh, well, we hit level 6, and we also got a 6 card, which is what we need to finally be able to use the door to the key to truth. That actually took a lot longer than I wanted it to, to be completely honest with you, so we're going to go ahead and use that looming darkness and the key to truth. Be prepared, though, because this means that you have a boss fight in front of you. That's going to be, that's going to tend to be true anytime you have a key to truth room that you open. So be prepared, and look who it is. Oh my god. I knew you would return, Riku. Maleficent, you're alive? You haven't been paying attention. I am but a figment of your memory. Of all the people I could run into, it had to be you. But of course. After all, your heart is steeped in darkness. You can only see those who exist in that same darkness. No. Be grateful you have someone to keep you company. Your heart is empty. Were it not for the darkness it contains, you would be completely alone. Hey guys, I can't do a Maleficent voice. Just throwing it out there. That's sounding pretty good right about now. Come now. You once turned to me to sate your hunger for darkness. You want me here. Who but I can grant you the darkness you long for? There was a time I did want you around. I surrendered my heart to the dark. But never again. You and your darkness have nothing to offer. All I did was lose myself, empty myself. I'm finished with all that. If I'm stuck seeing people like you, people of the dark, I'll take you out one by one. <laughs> then you mustn't forget to destroy yourself last. For, like me, you are one of the dark. That's fine with me. I turned to darkness because my heart was weak. I hate that weakness, it's like my own enemy. And seeing people like you embrace the darkness just makes it worse. Enough talk, Maleficent. So you hate the darkness enough to fight it. Oh, the agony you must feel. Then let me end your pain, Riku. End it forever with the wondrous power of darkness. That's right, guys. We get to fight Maleficent right off the bat. But more importantly... Oh, this ain't no just Maleficent. Oh, no, 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 no. It's Dragon Maleficent, 
right off the bat. The first boss of Riku's story is none other than that. So I, what I just did just then is I went and actually used a card that is going to be really useful and that is our defender card which we haven't actually used yet each world will have its own uh thing its own enemy card that you can use now the dragon is going to proceed to use these very high level cards we want to use slates this is the only reason we are using slates is literally to card break her from doing anything now if we do this right we can shut her down and she can almost do no damage to us now unfortunately uh that wasn't totally true uh because she did get this fire down on the ground which is something that we absolutely did not want uh, but we will go ahead pop that have another card here all right and down goes dragon maleficent just like that on proud mode And we will, of course, level up. And, more importantly, we get the Dragon Maleficent card. This card is going to be so useful throughout playing this game. Now, we're, of course, going to raise our HP because that's all we can do. Level 7 already. We're cruising. We're cruising through this game. And we will find ourselves not in Conqueror's Respite like Sora would normally. No, no, no. Instead, we find ourselves... Here on this map, the Strong Initiative, which actually leads, if we go ahead and use this door, it will lead right to Conqueror's Respite. So you actually have to, you know, fight to get here. But once you're here, well, Conqueror's Respite. Everybody knows it, everybody loves it. We'll go ahead and climb this ladder and make sure that you save here. Although it's not a total big deal, I would recommend it anyways. You just took down Dragon Maleficent. All right, now let's proceed to the 12th floor exit hall. Why do you shun the darkness? <laughs> Come on, I know you heard me. Every word I said to Maleficent. Darkness is your weapon. It is time you learned you must accept it. What do you mean? Stop resisting. Except the darkness. You have no choice. If you are to serve me again. I thought it was you, Ansem. Oh, you don't seem surprised. All you have been talking about is the darkness. I can only assume you want to pull me back in so you can play puppet master. Clever boy. I knew you'd be the one to most appropriately serve me. And now, surrender to me again. You're crazy! Not a chance! Did you really think you could do me harm? A weakling like you could even defeat Sora and you had darkness on your side. Uh, uh, oh, excuse me for being weak. You are weak. You need darkness. Surrender. Bow to darkness. Bow to me. <sighs> That's not gonna happen. Only the darkness can offer to you all of the strength that you will need. You're wrong. Oh. That voice. Your Majesty? That's right! Remember, Riku, you're not alone! Listen close. The light will never give up on you. You'll always find it, even in the deepest darkness. I got it. I won't lose to darkness. Not today. You think that feeble little light can save you from the darkness that I come The second boss fight of the game is Ansem, not voiced by Billy Zane, which is really annoying because Billy Zane was amazing and this guy isn't as good. But it's still Ansem, it is still the voice, and don't worry guys, don't freak out. 
It's a tutorial battle. You shall feel the darkness everywhere. What does that even mean, dude? Give me all you've got, I'll give it right back. This is a tutorial vi uh, battle to teach you how to do this. So we want to switch right away and break his card. Now, unfortunately, I didn't do that fast enough. There we go, that was fast enough. If you do it within a certain amount of time, you will get rapid break. Quickie, quickie break the opponent's card for a boost in attack. That is super important to know throughout the game. You absolutely need to know that. Not giving up yet? I wonder how much of this you can take. I'm just going along until you give up. All right, so now we are going to have to show the same valued card as the opponent and press triangle. So what we'll do is we'll wait for him to use it. And then we will get a duel here and we will just go ahead and try to break his card as much as we can. And down he goes. We will duel and we will hit him with impulse, which is kind of a slate, if you will. This is the duel system. Show the same valued card as the opponent and press triangle to start. Break all the enemy's cards to execute a slate, but you will need more than eight cards. That is Ansem down, sort of. Dueling is super important. Learn to master it. You need it. What? That all you got? It seems to me that you are intent on resisting the darkness. All right, then see it for yourself. Huh? This is a card crafted from your memory. Advance through the world it creates and soon you will understand. Chasing after light is not the way. It will not give you distance from the darkness. There is no running from the darkness. Don't worry, I'm not running. Give it. I'll enter the world and in the end, if I haven't given in to the darkness, then I win. I have one more gift for you. What'd you do? I simply tempered the darkness that yet remains in your heart. You still think that I'd rely on darkness? To use it or not is your choice. I'll be waiting, Riku, for you to sense it and yield to the darkness in your heart. <laughs> Nailed it. So now, we will learn D-Mode. What is D-Mode, you ask? Dark Mode. Dark Mode can be activated when you have accumulated maximum DP through card breaks. You will gain a certain amount. You need to hit 30. At 30, you will hit Dark Mode. So each point is rewarded by breaking a card. Say if your opponent has a 2 and you break it with a 9, you will get 7 points added to your, your gauge. However, the most you can get at any one time is 9. So don't think you're going to be able to slate, say, 27 and break a 1 and get 26 points. That's not how it works. DP is lost when your card is broken or you've received damage. It is possible to stay in darkness mode for an entire battle. That is that is that is worth mentioning. And we will get four world cards. Traverse Town, Agrabah, Monstro, and Neverland. Much like Sora. Except we're working kind of in reverse. Because as you can see, we are here on the 12th floor exit hall of the basement. And we're working our way up, baby. Next is going to be the 11th floor entrance hall. What awaits us at the top of Castle Oblivion? What awaits us? Can we rescue Sora? Where is Sora? Where are we? What is happening? No one knows. Riku's story is perhaps the most important part to understand the events of Kingdom, Kingdom Hearts 2, which is why we are playing it now. If you guys enjoyed this first episode, please let me know by liking the video, leaving comments, whatever you can do, share with friends. The more people that like this series, the faster it'll come out and the, the more Kingdom Hearts that you will see here on the channel. Thank you all very much for watching and remember, never give up, never surrender to the darkness. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to click on any of these videos that are now appearing on your screen. And if you want to support the channel, be sure to click on that Patreon button, become a patron, and get some really cool rewards.